beating in that one. Oh, it was a hell of a match. I showed it Mick Foley, though. But you're already searching for it, so I guess I'll get right into it. Yeah, I'm getting it, getting it queued up here. Which I'm uh, glad you are. Uh, we'll do we'll watch from the beginning. We'll just kind of tab it to our match here. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, go ahead and tell the folks what your choice is for our watch along. This one was a little shorter, so I figured it, we figured it'd be better for the watch along. But uh, RVD versus Jeff Hardy for the hardcore title at Invasion 2001. You sure you don't want to watch Nick Patrick and Earl Hebner? I I <laughs> totally can. I totally did not but, uh, remember that. I don't know if it's here. underrated, but I'd be down. Yeah, it's more mid card. Actually, maybe it's towards the end. There it there is. We All go. Right. Wow, the we WWE got, we got hardcore store. Holly at WAF New York. Or no, the the restaurant is what it was, I believe. All right, so we'll we'll click pause here so everybody can uh, take a minute to jump on. It looks like we're at what does that say? One twenty-two thirty-four, and it is the. It looks like the third to last match on yeah. the show. Uh, we got Tori Wilson and Stacey Keebler versus Trish Status and Lita. Might watch that on my own later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. And in the main event, the Alliance <laughs> versus Team WF is is after this. Yeah. So we're at one twenty-two thirty-four on Invasion two thousand and one. Uh, before we get started, man, what was your uh, memories of the invasion angle? Like, it, it definitely, um, I think in retrospect, could have been handled a lot better. Actually, I have a, a pretty decent story. Yeah, I was let's, in let's do it California, visiting my dad mm -hmm. when this was happening, mm -hmm. and it was the only time I ever asked him to, or we're he giving, ever we're actually. Giving a shout out to Big Phil Thomas out there. Yeah, thanks, Dad, for <laughs> 2001 buying this pay per view for me, <laughs> and the place he lived. He had a, th a home theater. Okay. With a, with a ten foot screen on the wall, so I was able to watch this in there with surround sound and everything. It was like I was there. Yeah, that, that's that's amazing. That would be amazing today, 2018. Not to mention in 2001. And this was a big, kind of a big deal because it was the invasion of sure ECW and WCW sure. and the WWE. So I was down. I actually still have this pay per view recorded on a VHS tape that I recorded that night. Awesome. And uh, so. I have very fond memories of this, although the invasion angle could have been done way better. Sure. It was still exciting at the time. So. Yeah. And then, so you got some fond memories going back. For sure. All right. Well, hopefully everybody's ready to go. We're at 122.34. It's the third to last match. We're going to watch Rob Van Dam versus Jeff Hardy. Click play now. All right. Exciting. RVD, <laughs> man. <sighs> RVD was so hot at this era. Like it, he was the ECW brand in those in those latter years of ECW. I mean, it was always the you, you can't wait for what RVD was going to do next. Innovative offense, yeah, and really like I wouldn't call it a ripoff because their styles weren't exactly the same at all. But everybody knew the daredevil that Jeff Hardy was. Yeah, for sure. Back in that at that time. So to get these two guys together almost seemed like a no-brainer once you got the ECW guys on board. For sure. For sure. Not only that, but so many colors in this match. We got tiger stripes and colored hair. These guys were kind of the, the two cool dudes of the time. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. This is 2001, man. Style was different, but you had, yeah, <laughs> laid-back, <laughs> airbrushed RVD. Looking like Tony the fucking Tiger or something. <laughs> a little bit. Meets Stone Cold Steve Austin with the skull on his chest. But, yeah. Uh, man, there's losing that crowd reaction for Jeff Hardy here. Uh, dude, they were so over then. They're still over. That's yeah, back when the pretty they, cool set, man. I was about to, but just about to say this is when they started doing like real extravagant Titan Trons. Mm -hmm. Before it was pretty much just the same basic thing, but with different screens. Yeah, they just showed that uh, pretty much angle with Van Dam. You know, they were trying to get all these WCW and ECW guys over as super heels. But, you know, it was tough with a guy like, oh, jeez. Yeah. Tough with a guy like RVD where, you know, people were really excited to see him here. They knew that this match was going to be nonstop action. So I think they tried whatever they could to, to establish RVD as the heel going in. It was it was real real technical in the beginning. Like, I, within the first few minutes, too, he they kind of fuck each other up. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, well, I like that. Uh, yeah, it was well known about RVD. If you were in an RVD match, those fists and those kicks, they were going to be coming, man. <laughs> well, I, I can't remember where it is. I know it's not too far in, but Jeff gets dropped on his head pretty Oh, man. Pretty heinously. We're talking some underrated matches. Uh, again, when I tell you these two guys on paper, you're going to say, well, of course that was good. But uh, about a year from now, SummerSlam 02, we got RVD against Chris Benoit. Intercontinental title match. Ah. Again, I tell you those two guys, of course that's good. But how many times have you heard that being mentioned as an all-time classic match? Yeah. Well, it being Benoit, that's going to be a hard one. In, yeah. Anywhere in the public light. Or acknowledge well, yeah, from WWE diff- themselves. Difficult, difficult kind of going back and talking about Benoit matches. But at the time, I remember loving that match. And if you go back and watch it again, those are two dudes that just beat the shit out of each other. It's- Believe that. Now, I see we got a note for that Triple H Taka no- Mishinoku match. That was that was one that came up a lot of times during my research, and I didn't get a chance to check that one out. I couldn't find it. It would be no. hard to find a Raw, just a random Raw from 2000. Didn't tell you the month. Uh, yeah, I'll do a little more research. Get a little deeper into that Google search, Mark. Uh, I guess I'd have to. Pulling this match up, right? You're pulling this. Uh, uh, Rock versus Chris Benoit, fully loaded 2000 was on there. I didn't get it right. There were so many underrated matches oh, yeah. at two sides. Rolling Thunder, can't go wrong there. Yeah. Uh, this match from Meltzer gets four stars. Uh, I really truly believe we're not going to have any trouble getting to that rate. It was, it was the best match on the show. The main event got three and a half. It's the only okay. thing that even approached it. Yeah, I imagine this one wasn't too highly rated, this uh, this pay-per-view. Well, what was high, widely criticized about the WCW invasion was is that, you know, you wanted to get the stars. Now, granted, WCW had some good wrestlers, you know, come over. They had, you know, Mike Awesome and Canyon and uh, oh. Lance Storm. Some good wrestlers came along. But, you know, the dream matches was Stone Cold versus Goldberg. It was, you know, well, The Rock versus Hogan eventually did happen. Yeah. But, you you know, Sting versus The Undertaker. These were the matches Seeing that the people. Seeing the outsiders come back. Cut, right. These were the matches that people wanted. And they just didn't get anything like that at all. No, they the gave stars you Booker weren't there. T and... Uh, What's his name? Uh, Pal- Palumbo. Chuck Palumbo. And, DDP uh, came along. Guys that really want to come in there and wrestle and establish a brand further, which was great. But uh, what it was was that those guys had contracts that they were going to get paid to sit at home. So yeah. your Hulk Hogan, your Goldbergs, and your Stings. And oh, yeah. I'm not sure what they were going through there, but it works. See, with, <laughs> with these guys, even the botches looked good. Well, because everything was so high impact, man. Everything was just. You know, Hardy always did that running the railing deal. So whatever RVD did, just running and knocking him off was just take hey, a crazy bump and you'll yeah. be fine. Yeah, <laughs> that actually reminds me of something we talked about earlier. What? That's completely off the subject, so I'll just throw it out there. But the Tommaso versus Champa match, that dude in the crowd with the sign and the stop sign inside his sign. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he hits the guy with the sign, and you're like, "What the hell?" <laughs> like, yeah, that was definitely set up, but I just thought that was so strange. And just this whole segment here just reminded me of that. Yeah, that was I, nice. I mean, RVD was a was parkour before parkour existed, man. Oh yeah, dude, oh, yeah. anywhere he could plant, he was flipping off of. Oh, that's right. The hardcore title was False Count Anywhere. False Count Anywhere. Wow. He's probably stoned during this match. Looks, <laughs> he definitely looks high. These guys had a rematch the next month. It was SummerSlam 2001, and it was a ladder match for the hardcore title. And I remember going in thinking, man, this match is so great. Like, how great would a ladder match be? Mm. And I remember being a little underwhelmed. I, I just looked it up. Meltzer gave that three and a half stars. So he did rate it a little bit lower than this one. But I remember uh, previously just feeling a, a lot better about this match than that ladder match. Of course, this being the first match was really, really excited to see what these two could do together. Yeah. I remember this being pretty slick. A little mm. spinning kick. That was also like a spinning leg drop. And, w- and the thing was, is he hit that pretty often in ECW. But ECW at that point was just, I mean, it was a big indie. It was really what Ring of Honor is. Now, it wasn't, you know, they had some national TV exposure with TNM, but it didn't draw well. If, if you ever watch the rise and fall of ECW, you'll know why. 
So a lot of these fans maybe had heard of Rob Van Dam, but not necessarily seen his whole repertoire of, of moves, and they're really into his shit here. Yeah. I remember he first came around, everybody was asking if he was related to Jean-Claude. <laughs> it has a no. slight resemblance. A little bit. A little bit. I don't know. I always looked at RVD and it just screamed. He just screamed like late 80s, early 90s to me. <laughs> like he should be on the beach lifting weights. Well, that was pretty much him. Yeah. like <laughs> Smoking a doob. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Ugh. That, man, that's Bad. a rough bump. Yeah. They got a mat there. Yeah, and that's going to absorb some of it, but there's just no give to concrete. It's still solid, yeah. And I've taken some bumps on the floor, but, I mean, you figure the impact coming off the apron like that. Mm. Dude, I've, I've jumped on my bed a little too hard. You yeah. know what I mean? And you feel it. You feel it in your bones, <laughs> yeah. right? Damn. That's a that gargantuan is, ladder. It really is. <laughs> 20 foot ladder, I think. I don't know if it's really 20 feet, but it's probably close. You can probably reach 20 feet on that ladder. You And then you got to figure where your eye level is. That's what I always tell people, just how the top rope is scary. Uh, I mean, look how far you're looking down at this point. Oh. Uh, this. Just fuck it. I'm gonna just push your ass over. And then he's oh my lands God. right on the ramp. And you know the thing is, is somebody like you know some of the crazy bumps that you see later, where you go through tables and some of that's actually like designed to be a big extravagant bump. Mm. That one right there is terrifying. Yeah, that's just that's, that's just, just straight falling way. onto the ground. <laughs> Your There's body's no... not meant to do that. No. I love it because a lot of times you'll see him climbing the ladder and you set up this big extravagant spot. I Man, sometimes you climb a giant ladder, just push that fucker off. Yep. You put yep. <laughs> like that. That's there's some logic involved. There's velocity in at that point too. You're hitting the ground even faster. Ooh. Ooh, that was a good one. Those chair shots. No, they never feel good. They they, they, they can't. They those are real chairs. Yeah, and sometimes I mean, you you get a steel chair. You want to find what's a little bit lighter than heavier because those heavy ones, man, will just really jar your bones. But you, they, but even those lighter ones, they still sting. Oh, the <sighs> Van Damme. That was so good. Knocked him off the stage. <laughs> See, and those head shots with the chairs, man. Some of them looked so bad. They probably were really bad. Well, I, we we talked in a prior episode about concussions and knowing what we know now, and it's a good thing because back then, man, everything extreme was just such a hot button thing back then. Everything was extreme, and man, make it look real. Take those shots to the head. You'll be all right. Yeah. And knowing the research we know now, no, you end up not being all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you'll be all right. Watch that. The Rock versus Mankind Royal I'd Rubble rather, 1999. Oh, God, yeah, I quit match. I'd rather not. That is probably the most brutal match I've ever seen. What did that end up being? I think 11 or 12 chair shots unprotected. Yeah, they agreed to like three, and yeah. he did like so anywhere from 9 to 11 or something, like 9 that's, to 12. That's insanity. He couldn't even defend himself. He had handcuffs on. Yeah. Oh, I'm really enjoying this match. A lot of times, you know, you figure these two guys and what they're known for, they would just transition maybe from big move to big move to big move. Mm. And while there has been some big spots, the fighting in between seems pretty legit. Just, to, you know, Rob Van Dam pushing him off the ladder and then coming towards him and Jeff just having that ladder nearby and throwing it up in his face. I like that sort of stuff. It, it makes you feel like, no, this is a real fight. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're mixing their technical more high fly type stuff with the like brutal hardcore brawling yeah it's a nice mix of both this is just oh cool 
That was a total skateboarder movie. Like, he has a surfer on the beach. Yeah, and I try not to be overly critical and things like that because I, I want to enjoy what I see. But there are some times where you got the guy down, he's laying on the mat for ooh, ooh. for 30 seconds, a minute, while you're setting up, say, two, three, four tables and a ladder, and it's like you could have just pinned him. Yeah. Oh, that DDT take. That, I, I, I try to... Um, oh, that's a beautiful DDT. I try to mirror the, the RVD DDT bump. Mm-hmm. There is Oh jeez. Wow. If I remember correctly, the finish to this match is kind of a classic thing you don't see much of anymore. Well, let's not spoil it for our no, I'm not gonna. watchers along, anybody who wants to participate in this with us. But uh no, I I look forward to it. Oh, he's bleeding from the forehead. That Which was a again, chair. again, yeah, it looks like it's probably a hard way because it's uh not a big not a gusher by any means, but no. I mean you can only have a chair flying through your, you know, by your head so many times. Those backsides of those chairs are pretty heinous. Oh God, yeah. Woo! Just got out in the nick of time. That can't feel good. No, it's a long way down to crash like that. Oh, we're gonna look five here star we here. Go. Looking like a little monkey. Oh. See, and that's the hardcore title. That thing's all broken and sharp and shit. That's going to do it. Man, oh, There man. It was. There it was. And that's that classic finish you don't see much of anymore. And Laying the belt on him. Using there was another match that was only what, about 11, 12 minutes, but just nonstop action through yeah. and through. I mean, Ooh. that that's a hell of a match there that... I remember watching back in the day now, but like at the time when I was looking it up, I was like, really? I don't remember this. But as I was watching it, it just all started coming back to me. What was good about this match is that these guys had a couple more matches and you knew that they could up the crazy. Yeah. <laughs> as we were mentioning earlier, you know, Jeff could jump off some, some more ladders and some tables and they could they could really up the, the, the spectacle of what they were doing. This match felt like a fucking fight. Yeah. For 10 minutes with the you know, each guy knowing that they could go high risk and Jeff went for one and it didn't work out. RVD went for his and it did. That was a hell of a match. Four stars. Easy. I, I agree completely with Meltzer sure. on this one. And if folks hasn't haven't seen this one before, should go and check it out. Yeah. No, I could have said it better myself. sir. this match was phenomenal. 